All right, guys, this is the uh, time I've been really waiting for this job here. We're going to put this IVT back together. So here's the lowdown on this thing. Okay. Um, we're going to kind of do something that I'm not normally accustomed to, and that's uh, half-assing something. We're going to half-ass it back together. Uh, and I can't blame the guy. They're only going to give him like $10,000 for a trade-in on this tractor. And basically me and the owner, he's got two, he's got three of these 7320s. The, the one I made a video on here a while back had the common rail fuel system. That was the newest 7320 that he's got with the lowest hours. He's going to keep that one. And then he found three 7430s that, uh, from a dealer that were rental lease returns or something down there with low hours. And he's going to buy them. Cause I told him, I said, I would not buy any more 6170Rs. I mean, they're just problematic. There's too much electronics on them. There's too much, there's just too much bullshit on them, you know? And I mean, they're okay for an owner operator outfit, I think, that somebody they can actually knows. But when you got a bunch of hired hands getting on them and they don't know what a regen is and the DPF filters are always plugged. I mean, I'm constantly out there doing forced regens on them, uh, constantly changing EGR coolers on them. It's just like every other emissions bullshit thing. You know, so he found those 7430s, and uh, they're only going to give him 10 a piece for these two tractors. So he wants to do the bare minimum. He says, so what do you think, Warren? And I said, well, uh, that bearing failed. I said, if that bearing failed and seized that shaft, I said, maybe it was seeing a mismatch between the input and output speed sensor. And I said, it may not have even moved anyway. It may not have been able to move because the shaft was seized. Uh, you know, so I said, uh, the only thing I said, the clutch packs look fine in it in C1, C2, C3, and C4, that Ford reverse look packs look fine. So the only thing that's questionable is a hydrostatic unit. I have no idea. So he said, let's just gamble. He says, change those bearings. I was going to order, I ordered a shaft. I actually canceled the order on the shaft and uh, I just got the bearings is what I ended up doing because that's what he wanted to do and so I'm worried about it but I'm not worried about it because I know these guys I want it to work you know um, but the on the other hand I'm not liable you know I know they're not gonna Mr. Nelson's not gonna do anything because it doesn't move he knows that we're taking a risk here but uh, you know they don't want they don't want tractors sitting over there with the cab off of it and junk sitting around which i can't blame them they they kind of like to clean it keep a clean operation and so he says i just you know i'd rather have it assembled and drag it in there and try to get something for it you know he said so let's take a gamble and if it get moves at least i'll get my 10 out of it and maybe i can break even on your bill so that's what we're gonna do so as you can see here's the old shaft i cleaned it up the best i could it actually spun that bearing on that shaft and gouge the end of the shaft up pretty bad um we're just gonna have to you know put our bearing heater on there and put the bearing on and see what happens that's all we can do and you know there's shims and stuff on these shafts so we'll have to sh check our backlash or our in play and everything on these shafts when we get done so here we go guys let me get set up here and i'll start uh, going through this thing so i uh, got my bearings on my shaft if you guys watched my previous videos I've got that cone type bearing heater that's sitting over there on that solvent tank and uh, just heat them up there on that cone type bearing heater. There's a uh, uh, a crayon that comes with those that melts at a certain temperature, I think it's 220 degrees or something like that. Just keep touching on the inner race of that bearing until it starts melting then your bearing will slide right over your shaft. It's easy. So I put two new bearings on this shaft. Uh, this bigger bearing is going to go down in the case over here this is going to be on our output side of our transmission and these should be slip fit bearings braces you might have to tap on them a little bit i'm going to tap on it and make life a little easier for me it'll go down in there usually if i had a little more lead in my ass but i don't We'll just take the soft end of this hammer on the handle and just tap that bearing race right on down in there. 
make sure that it's seated all the way. Why not just get a little punch and get down in there, make sure it's seated. And we get the shaft put in there and then we'll go on over to the bench and start to, uh, I want to look at all those clutch packs and make sure all of them packs, you know, or look good before I put this thing together. I don't want to, if, I know we're kind of doing this the cheap way, but I want to do everything in, in my power to make sure that I've done everything that I can to make sure it's going to work. You know, the only thing that I don't have any control of is, you know, uh, the hydrostatic unit that's in it. Okay, so there's that bearing race. Let's take a little bit of tractor hydraulic fluid in our squirt can here, pre-lube our bearing. There's nothing on the other side of that. That gear doesn't turn anything. The only the only purpose of this whole shaft that I can see, unless it's a reverse idler, somebody might have been right on one of their comments. I'd have to really look at that. But I mean, the only thing I really see is it runs the speed sensor back here. All right, let's put this bolt back in here. That shaft will not come out of that case with that bolt in there. <laughs> starting feels good all right let's do this bearing up too is about as clean as possible to get them inside. Alright. Now this other bearing race, guys, will go over here on the brake, your, your uh, brake housing. And you want to take this shim. Okay, this shim's going to go on there. Shim will go on there and then your bearing race. Uh, where's my punch at? I left it over there. No, it's here. I gotta get all this cleaned off and kind of get it organized and start going through these packs so things cleaned up been so busy and then these guys were kind of indecisive as to what they were going to do with this thing so kind of sitting there nobody knew what was going on for quite a while all right well there's that um remember to put your shim in there don't want to put that together without your shim Turn it upside down and dump all the fucking bolts out of it. Alright, so now we're going to start going through all this stuff. Alright guys, I have a service manual for this. And I don't hold nothing back, I don't have no secret information. I googled this thing. After I found out, you know, because John Deere doesn't tell you this is an Ecom 1.5, um, I found that out just by doing some research. But uh, I just Googled it. I downloaded it on TradeBit for 15 bucks. <laughs> Alright, 
reassembly of KVKR clutch. Press the needle sleeve. Okay, so first thing we need to do is disassemble it all the way. Which is pretty, pretty easy to figure out. These things have all these little wave springs in between each friction and steel. And these are high energy, so I don't think they're burnt. I think they're just, that's the way they are. They look pretty damn good for 18,000 hours. I'll have to clean this up. These bearings all look pretty good. There's a shim that goes on top of that shaft there when you're putting this thing all that thing back together. Set your preload. Let's just dump this thing out and get all our elements out of it. Just like so. Ugh. looking like that to be honest with you guys there's no need to especially if you're half-assing one together like this in a normal rebuild application any clutch drum I would be pulling the clutch piston and uh, you know and looking at my looking at my uh, uh, piston o-rings and, and replacing them in this case what you'd have to do is you have to pull this snap ring, pull this bearing, uh, pull this gear, and then here's your clutch hub right here where you see your internal splines, and then underneath your clutch hubs, here's your clutch piston right here. So you would be doing that. Actually, you know what, that's another pressure plate looks like to me. That's not the clutch piston right there. It's still splined, in not it? Or, no, it's not. That is, that's gotta be the piston. Yeah, that's the clutch piston right there. Oh, well, guys, uh, we're gonna. We already got an internal line plate up against our clutch piston there. Got your internally lined friction, and then we're gonna stick a little wave spring on there, and then a externally lined plate. Internally lined plate, if I can get it to go on there. I don't like cobbling stuff together like this. It is what it is, though. One thing about it, there's no liability on my part. If it don't work, it don't work, and he knows that. I got a feeling it's gonna work, though, I really do. going to be tricky putting this back on here because you got to compress all those little wave springs to get the last couple discs in. So, I'll show you what I'm going to do there. See, we're already at the top of our clutch hub, pretty much flush with it there, and we still got two or three discs to go. This ought to be interesting, guys. And then our pressure plate. Alright. So I got me... This is a clutch piston. I can't remember what I think. This is like underdrive clutch piston. Out of a 545 RFE automatic transmission just looking for something that I could put on the press that would go over that pressure plate just enough to compress that and then I could just 
Put a piece of plate on the top here. I don't know, man. I may be... I still don't think I'm going to be high enough there. Uh, I still might be in trouble. I think I'm going to... I put a piece of plate here. Shit, I'm almost flush right here, so i got to find something else. So I got it done. I got it compressed and got my snap ring in there. Uh, there's a needle bearing down inside here. Make sure that's in there. This spacer is very important, so don't forget to put that back on once you get your clutch clutch pack back in there. If I was going to do more of these, I'd get me a piece of pipe that was that diameter, and I would make me a, you know, one with a flat plate on the top, and I would probably make some slots in that pipe to where I could see down in here and see if everything's lining up. It was kind of hard to see with this. But uh, yeah, we're just getting ready. We'll, uh, we'll stick her down in here. I had a bullshitter show up, so. All my ceiling rings are on there. That all looks good. All right, well, I think we're ready to go. This one ain't too heavy. That other one you need to do with a crane or something. It's heavy. Grind there inside the gear. That all be spotless. It's amazing how dirt can get in or anything. It's crazy. Go through hours of cleaning something up and then five minutes later you look at it and some bitch has got dirt all over it again. You just falling out of the sky or where in the hell is it coming from guys there's our directional pack and the one shaft there that failed on us with the speed sensor down here and let's see should be a coupler for the This coupler here goes down in there. This runs your pump. Your hydrostatic pump and motor. And that'll just drop down into here on these splines. Got different splines here. What do we got? Looks like exactly the same length. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same length. There we go. Alright, so the input or output side of the transmission is together. 
cool. I need to get this put in there. Make sure you pull this bolt out or that shaft will come out of there. That gear will hit it. All right, now we've got to start redoing the input side of our transmission. All those packs. I'm going to get most of those packs. And I'm going to set this spacer. We'll go right here. On top of the directional clutch pack shaft there. All right. I don't need these right now. I'll have to plug this thing in. It's about dead. All right, so here's where I'm at right now. I, I haven't really completed disassembly. Just there's planetaries left in there, but they're pretty dirty. I want to get the ring gear and the planetaries out and get them cleaned up and just check everything I can. Make sure you know there's no too much in play in the pinions on the planetaries. So, okay, we're gonna be pulling this ring gear out of the hub now. I got it kind of started. Um, stuff up. Now how about this piece here? How does it held in there? It's got another snap ring down there. I think we could probably get that. I don't know if we can get that snap ring from let's try just a straight pick and get down in there behind it maybe. No well, that ain't happening either. Can I turn it over and get to it from there or do I even really need to mess with that? There's really nothing there but a needle bearing and a sun gear, and it's about all there is there. I mean, I really, I guess I need to do, I probably should take it out and clean it up. Let me get that snap ring off right there. I can actually see it right there. Where's the end of it at? Over here. Now let's try to get the snap ring off from this side. Oh yeah, looks a hell of a lot better coming in from that end. Uh, usually when I'm doing all these snap rings, I get about 13 and 14 different damn low ring picks and screwdrivers and Shouldn't it? Scroll down. Okay, 
force the slotted pin out. Well, I'm not rebuilding that planet carrier. Okay, disassemble of planetary drive P1. Remove the actual washers two times. The actual needle cage, yeah, yeah. Disengage the snap ring and release planetary from the spline hub. Okay, well, it's not really releasing from the spline hub. It's kind of stuck in there. So maybe we need to tap on it. There we go. There we go. Lay it down at the side, it's easier. Yeah, okay, so there's our drum. Let's lay this upright. It's just got a lip on it down here where everything bottoms out. We'll clean this up real good. But okay, that's the complete disassembly. Now everything's completely disassembled. Now we're going to clean all this stuff up and look it over real good. Uh, there's an evil bearing in here, it looks good. Our planet carriers here. Yeah, see, we need to clean this up. See that shit and silvery looking stuff on there? We gotta get that cleaned up. I like to grab my planet carriers and kind of just make sure they're in a bunch of in play. You're gonna have a little up and down on them. There's actually some thrust washers. In there you can knock these roll pins out and rebuild them if you look at this book but uh, let me get the uh, get over to the solvent tank get all this stuff cleaned up and we'll start putting this thing back together well, here they're telling you to you know take this planetary apart and then reassemble it which we're not going to do if i was actually rebuilding this thing and doing the job right i would probably do it to cover my ass so basically now we're just going to uh Install the pre-assembled planetary P1 into the spine tube unit contact until contact is made, so obtained. Alright, this is planetary P1. There's a snap ring for it. Somebody's gonna complain about the light, but I don't care how much shop light you got, you're not gonna see down there inside that drum very well. Unless you're signing direct light on it. Okay, planetary P1 is in there now. So planetary P2, you'll see that part of planetary P root, P2 has got the ring, your ring gear here, and then your needle bearing. Ring. 
All right, now all this pain in the ass ring gear that was so hard to get out of there. Let's go down here to that step. Come on. This is a pretty nice little service manual, really. Okay, insert the ring gear P2 into the spline hut, pliant, spine tube until contact is obtained. Right. There's a step side on this ring gear and it's gonna go up. That's a tight fitting little son of a gun. Turn this planetary to get all my pinions and everything lined back up on that. There we go, we got her now. down in there now all right I gotta go get the rest of the clutch drums and all that stuff over here the next step we're gonna be doing is insert the Sun Gear Sierra into the planetary carrier oh whoa, whoa, whoa. Went a little too far here all right guys so here um, this is your Sun Gear here stick one side of the thrust washer where the the thrust needle bearing goes in there Okay, go stick it inside the shoulder, stick your needle bearing in there. And here's the other thrust washer in here. And then lay it, kind of just grasp it with your fingers and set her down in there. Okay, so there's our sun gear, that's all in there. Now, uh, scroll down here, go through this step by step. Uh, reassemble the planetary drive P3. Well, we didn't disassemble it. You can take this planetary drive P3 apart. This sun gear here will come off. And there's a roller bearing here, snap ring. Like I said, guys, if we were doing this right and we weren't cobbling it together just to get rid of the tractor, um, we'd be taking all this stuff apart and checking it all. But here you go on the other side, you get a snap ring and uh, another bearing and stuff in here so just a matter of pressing stuff off and pressing stuff back on same old song and dance but it's pretty easy to figure out that you see the spline hub right here on the center shaft here that's going to line up with that let's pull this back out and let's just double check see that goes on there just like that grab it and the sucker will fall out of my hand and I'll lose it. Oh shoot. Can take that off too. Bring here. down all the way now. Yeah, we're, we're down all the way now. Okay. Put a ring gear back on there. Down all the way. 
Here we go. Now we're down all the way. I do this stuff long enough, you can just feel them when they're right. When you're down all the way. All right, you'll notice there's another washer here. So this. That all feels like a million bucks right there. That feels really good, so. Okay, well, this pack here will have to go in next. Well, I'm gonna take them apart and just make damn sure that the, the uh, frictions and all that stuff look right. Roll on down here to where we know we're going to be to the next step here. Okay, insert pretty simple planetary carrier P3. We did all that. And stick your uh, disc carrier until contact with sun gear is contained. We did that. And insert axial washer and axial needle bearing. Well, the axial needle bearing's on the end of this right here, and it's kind of kind of pressed onto that shaft, so we're going to leave it alone. Okay, reassemble of clutch K1, K2. So, well, first thing we need to do is disassemble it the rest of the way. Make damn sure that we've uh, covered as many bases as we can there. And these snap rings in here look kind of a little bit tricky. I'll just get an old O-ring pick and get them out of there. It's stepped. Step goes up. I mean, these, I can't believe 18,000 hours. That's just unbelievable. I can say those guys built a good transmission. I've heard of people losing this pack, these packs in these before, which I can't get these parts to Palmer Johnson now. Okay. So. Got that off. This here, if I remember right. I gotta figure out how to get this this off right here. He's a tight fit. Wow. I'll tell you what, they kind of did the whole precision thing on these things. On their spline fits. And they, they really did. There we go. They're just they're just tighter than hell on there. You just kind of have to work at them and get them off. Okay, and that's what that snap ring there does. It holds that. That's kind of a weird setup, isn't it? 
Yeah, that is a weird setup. Hopefully that's done. Goofy, goofy, goofy. Goofy deal there. All right. So there ain't much else to that. The big carrier. see anything wrong here obviously carriers in good shape nothing's broke on it so we can basically put this piece here back on there we'll go back down here into the service manual Looks like you can take this carrier apart right here. They're showing a guy taking. What the hell's he taking off there? Must be something. Off the threaded pin. There's a threaded pin supposedly right there. Okay, there's a threaded Allen pin right there. You can take this apart with. Newton meters. It's just a carrier is all it is and with a bearing in it. These things aren't really that complicated really. Okay guys so there it is. You can't even see the snap ring now. It's it's locked internally there. So we got that one together. That's uh, another interesting deal. All right, this would just be kind of reversible disassembly. First steel plate in. Internally spline one, and I notice on these that first steel plate on there is almost about as thick as the pressure plate, but it's not stepped. pressure plate on. Pay attention to the end plate is exactly positioned. It must be audible when the snap ring engages into the annular groove into the end plate. Okay, it is. Alright, so we already did that. Start the preassemble K. K1, K2 into the spline tube until contact is made. Okay. So now this is where we can spline all this stuff up. So it'll be fun, huh? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gear, try to line these kind of halfway up. Stick this one back in there. See if we can get her splined up.
way that it could have been that easy. I don't like stuff when it goes that easy. There's no way that could be that easy. Need to be able to hold this one shaft while I turn that. back out because I just don't know it was just too damn easy nothing ever feels that easy I think it fell right in there all those are lined up perfectly wow it was just too damn easy guys it's just not supposed to go like that I'm supposed to fight that thing for you know 30 minutes trying to get it splined in there it's usually the way it goes anyway I've got some automatic transmissions on cars that I've done kind of stuff like that too and just fought them and fought them trying to get them spined up. I should have left it alone because now it's not going all the way down. Insert disc carrier K3 into the spline tube until contact is obtained. Gotta look this thing over. Is this directional or doesn't say on there? Looks like it's about the same shape on both sides. like it's not directional we're gonna put the part number facing up boy these ring gears they got guys are boy they're what you talk about snug fitting wow they are tight fitting they don't just slide down in there power shift and you go clunk and away you go alright fix the disc carrier with a snap ring Reassemble the central shaft. Okay, so I gotta get this center shaft and clean it up and go find the snap ring. And our snap ring groove is right here, so I think we're down all the way. Everything's turning and nothing's bound up. That's always a good sign. Alright guys, I'm gonna show the assembly of the spur gear. Put your spur gear. This will be the bottom end of your clutch pack. And then here's our center shaft. Small end goes in first. It's tight fit too. Especially when you get about to right here. Rubber mallet and just go ahead and tap it on in. Until it bottoms out. like it's seating up all the way for some reason. There it is, okay. All right, so now, spur gear and the center shaft's in it. Yeah, you're supposed to stand it up on its end, yeah, and then start the retake rectangular rings yeah make sure all your sealing rings I didn't get any new ones um, these are all not cut or beat up or anything so we're gonna go back together with them like I said again if I was doing a rebuild they'd all be new ones I guarantee you
Okay, now you're this planetary carrier you're supposed to put it all back together and we didn't take it apart. Alright, there you go. So we'll start out. With the steel plate. Goes on first. And a line plate. Just alternate them like you would any other clutch pack. So you get down to your pressure plate. Now this is a little different style of setup here, okay? So you got two snap rings here, okay? First one, stick your snap ring on. This is the internal snap ring. You can just put it on there by hand like that, okay? Then you're gonna have a retainer. that holds the other snap ring. Stick it in there next, and that'll go around your snap ring you just stuck in there. They were really worried about this gear coming out of here for some reason. Then the external snap ring will go in the groove of the pressure plate. I had quite a little fun getting it out of there. It's All right, there that is. I'm gonna kind of halfway line these up, eyeball them, and maybe it'll go in there a little easier. All right, now here we go with this little pack here. That's gonna go on the other end though. I'm on the wrong end. That's gonna go in here. I forgot all about that. Put this steel plate in here. And then a line or a friction. External line, you get it. Can you get this thing back together so I can get on my 6170R over there and uh, New Holland dealer just called me and said that the parts finally are going to be in tomorrow for that. Alright, well this one's pretty self-explanatory. It's just got a snap ring that holds it in there, uh, internal snap ring. Alright, that's all together. Let's see if we can kind of halfway line these up. Okay guys, now we're going to turn this up and set this in here. But I got to go get a stool and uh, where I can get up high enough to uh, put it on there. I'm actually just uh, thinking about just setting the whole shaft on the ground, but that spur gear is just going to fall off of there though. I need a hole cut in this bench and then this this will set flat and keep this gear in here because if I just tip this up on the shaft, the gear is going to well, no, I can't because there's a shoulder on that gear, or the shoulder on the shaft, so I can't. So we should be able to just stand this up on its end. Like that. Yeah. Well, let's do it on the ground, then we don't have so far to lift it. Ah. Oh, 
Okay, so let's make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing here in the right order. Yeah. Mount planetary drive P4 with clutch K3K4. Complete unit. All discs of both clutches are mounted. Okay. Here we go. Let's shake rattle and roll time now. External line plates. Really, really close. Alright man, I'm there. I am there now. I felt it bottom, so we're there guys. Okay, insert the snap ring in the lower end of the groove with yeah, Okay, that's all put together already. Ball bearing. Mount the pre-assembled ring gear. Okay. So obviously the ring gear is gonna go back down towards the pinions. that is start the ball bearing okay that's all said and done start the pre-assembled drum select your gear with the lifting device into the clutch housing all right guys well all we got to do now is lift this up stick it back in the case there's our C1, C2, C3, C4 clutch backs. Everything's done. I mean, it's not that bad. If you're really doing a rebuild, it would be way more, you know, intensive because you'd have to do this right. And, you know, I would follow the book verbatim if I was doing this right. And it would, I'd have a whole lot more time. 
into this thing so um, but for now that's all we're gonna do